Kelly here. I'm the owner of Broadwick Fibers. We specialize in super chunky, hand dyed and felted merino wool yarns. Uh, since our last YouTube video on how to make a stockinette stitch blanket, we've been getting a ton of pattern requests from you guys for how to make a seat stitch blanket. So I just wanted to take a minute to show you guys how we make them here in our Denver studio. We're actually gonna be using a new knitting technique that I developed specifically for my chunky yarns called flat knitting. Basically what we're gonna be doing is laying our knitting flat on the table and then working the stitches with our hands. Uh, this technique is really, really wonderful because unlike with arm knitting, you're never holding the whole weight of the yarn in your hands. Um, and it also means that you can leave your knitting on the table and walk away if you need to take a break. Just one quick note before we get started on the type of yarn that you decide to use for your chunky knitting project. I really would encourage you guys to use actual yarn and not just roving. Most of the blankets that you're going to see on Etsy and Pinterest and Amazon are going to be made using these really beautiful raw roving strands. Um, the problem with roving, if you're not familiar with it, is that it's literally just raw sheep's wool um, that's been combed so all of the fibers, fibers face the same direction, but that's all that's holding the strands together, which means that it's going to shed and it's going to pill a lot, um, and you might accidentally rip it when you're working with it. It's just really delicate and fragile, and the end product isn't going to be very durable. Um, so I really would encourage you guys to get actual yarn. The two words you want to look for when you're shopping for your yarn are felted or spun, and both of those will be a really good indication that you're buying actual yarn and not just roving. Um, we sell our yarns on our website or on our Etsy shop. It's this two and a half pound hank of super chunky felted yarn, a flat work surface, and your hands. Um, if you want to upgrade to three kilograms to get a little bit bigger, that's absolutely fine. Four kilograms will make about a 40 by 60 inch standard throw size. And then if you're looking at buying five to six kilograms, that's going to be a really big blanket, just to kind of give you an idea um, of, of what size you would want to make. So go ahead and take your yarn and unwrap it. Um, I like to move it over to my left where it's most comfortable for me um, and grab your end. So. Like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be making a 35 by 50 inch blanket. So that means the length of our blanket is going to be 50 inches. Um, each stitch in this style of knitting is approximately two and a half inches. So for this blanket, this particular size, we're going to want to cast on 20 stitches. So in this method of flat knitting, the cast on is actually replaced by a chain stitch. So to go ahead and get started, what we're going to do is form a slip knot. And you're gonna to wanna to leave about a 20 inch tail for your slip knot. Just like that. And this is gonna be the very first loop in our cast on of 20 loops. You want that initial slip knot to kind of be big enough that you can kind of move your thumb and your forefinger in comfortably. And what you're gonna to do to chain stitch on your other 19 stitches is you're gonna grab the working yarn in between your thumb and your forefinger and you're gonna pull up a loop. So that's your second loop in your chain stitch. So grab a yarn between your thumb and your forefinger again and pull up your third loop. And you're just gonna continue on like that. Four, five, six, seven, nine, So there's your chain stitch or your initial cast on. Now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna lay your knitting flat on the table in front of you. So once your chain stitch is flat on the table, you're gonna take this working yarn and set yourself up and pull it up over the top of your knitting. And then what we're gonna be doing is working in to these top ridges of your chain stitch. So just double check that you have 20 of them. This loop on the end does count as your first ridge. So because we're going to be doing a seed stitch, we're going to be alternating knitting and purling stitches. Um, and that's ultimately what's going to give you your seed stitch pattern. So we'll, let's start with a knit into this first ridge, this first top loop. So for a knit, you're going to take your, grab, take your working yarn and you're going to tuck it up underneath that loop. And that is a knit stitch right there. So your next stitch into your top ridge, into your second top ridge, is going to be a purl stitch. So unlike with your knit stitch, you're actually gonna take the working yarn and pull it through from the top of that ridge. And that right there 
is your purl stitch. So you can kind of see the difference. This is a knit stitch, and then where it goes across the top of the loop is a purl stitch. So we're just gonna continue on alternating the rest of the way down our chain stitch. So next is knit stitch, pull up a loop, and then for the purl stitch, we're gonna be pulling down through the top of that ridge. Your knitting might flip a little bit that way, that's okay, just kinda tuck it back down and lay it flat. So you're gonna knit one, and then you're gonna purl the next one. Knit one, and then purl one. And you're just kind of continuing like this the rest of the way down. Knit one, purl one. Knit one, purl one. You're pulling up a pretty big loop, guys. It'll probably feel a little bit bigger than you think it needs to be, and that's just fine. This type of knitting is really forgiving, and it kind of all evens out. So give yourself a little bit more slack than you think you need. So we're getting down to the end of our chain stitch. You just wanna make sure that you don't miss this last little slip knot loop ridge. So this is your last ridge right there, and it goes straight into your slip knot, and you're gonna wanna purl into that last ridge. So that's your first row done, guys. So to get started on your second row again, you're just gonna take that working yarn. I always like to pull a little bit of slack up over the top just to give myself some room to work. For a seed stitch pattern, what you're gonna be doing is you're always gonna knit on top of purl stitches and purl on top of knit stitches. So you can see this last stitch that you've just done is a purl stitch. You know that it's a purl stitch because the yarn is running across the top of the loop. Whereas with this one, do you see how there's no yarn running across the top of that knit stitch? So what you're gonna wanna do is alternate. So because this is a purl stitch, you wanna knit on top of that purl stitch. And then because this next loop is a knit stitch, you're gonna purl on top of your knit stitch. And then you're just kind of, you're alternating. So you're knitting here, Curling one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, <clears throat> knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. So it's just a nice, easy pattern. You're just alternating and you're making sure that you're always purling on top of your knit stitches and then knitting on top of your purl stitches. And that's what gives you that really beautiful seed stitch pattern. So that right there is the end of our second row. So the third row is where you really start to see the pattern come into shape. So take that working yarn, pull it right up over the top again. And then you can see really easily that you've got a purl stitch first and a knit stitch second. So because this is a purl stitch, you wanna knit on top of that purl stitch and you wanna purl on top of the next knit stitch. And you're just kind of going nice and easy like that all the way down to make your third row. And you can really kind of see that really beautiful seed stitch pattern just kind of start to come into view on the third row. And then by the fourth and fifth row, the pattern is really solidified and, and it just starts to look really nice. You can see this goes really, really quickly. It's really, it's a really pretty fast project. I love a 35 by 50 inch throw. I think that it's like the perfect size for an armchair or to put on the back of the couch. Um, it's a great size for a single throw, just for one person, a little bigger than a lap blanket. Um, yeah, it's a really fantastic size. <clears throat> and this color glacier is just one of my favorites. I think that the color variation is really beautiful. So again, you're just purling on top of your knit stitches, you're knitting on top of your purl stitches, just alternating like that. So guys, if you were making a 40 by 60 inch throw, you just wanna take the length and cast on 
um, the number of stitches divided 2.5 divided by the length. So if your length is 60, you want to divide that by 2.5 to get 24, and that's how many stitches you would cast on in your chain stitch. So that's kind of how you determine how many stitches you need in your initial chain stitch for your cast on. <laughs> that for the cast off you leave yourself kind of a decent hunk of yarn so that's about for me about one two three four about five to six arms lengths worth of yarn depending on how long your arms are I'm short so I've got short arms <laughs> you can kind of decide when to cast off based off of how much yarn you have or if you're trying to make a really specific measurement so in this case we're making a 35 by 50 inch blanket you can just measure and make sure you've got 35 inches. So we do, right there, we've got, we're at 34 and a half, which is perfect because we still have to cast off. We're gonna begin just like we did any other stitch. You're gonna pull the yarn up over the top and then you're just gonna work the stitches like you have been for the whole blanket. So you're gonna knit on top of this purl stitch and then you're gonna purl on top of the knit stitch and then you're gonna stop. And you're gonna take this second loop that you've just made and you're gonna tuck it underneath your first loop and that's the beginning of your cast off and then I like to hold this loop that I'm working with in my hand so then for your third your third stitch is a purl stitch so you're gonna want to knit onto that purl stitch and you're gonna take that most recent loop and tuck it under that my outermost loop and you're just gonna continue like that all the way down so for your next stitch is a knit stitch so you're gonna want to purl into that and then you're gonna want to tuck it into your outermost loop. And you're just kind of continuing the whole way down, just like that, for your cast off. And you're gonna get this really lovely braided edge on the end. excess on the end but that's okay so when you get to the end you tuck this outermost loop under your most recent loop and then you're going to want to grab your excess yarn and pull it straight through just to form a normal knot and you're going to tighten it down and that's going to be the edge of your blanket so to finish off what I like to do is you're going to want to separate it it's going to be kind of hard because it's felted so you've really got to pull at it and then I just like to rip right there. So you're gonna wanna have like a little five inch tail hanging. And then you're just gonna take that and you're gonna just tuck it in and make it look like a, the, the rest of the blanket. Just kind of follow along with one of your stitches. And then I'm just gonna either stitch it down there with a needle and thread, which you can totally do. Or if you happen to have a needle felter and felting mat, then you can actually felt it down this way as well. You can buy these needle felters and felting mats from most local yarn stores or off of, or off of Amazon as well. I think Michael sells them. They're pretty easy to find. We're just gonna stitch this side down just like that. Nice and easy. And then you really can't even see 
the join. And then we'll flip the blanket around. And we're gonna do the same thing with this tail edge as well from our cast on. So again, I just like to kind of tighten it up and then just kind of tuck it, tuck it back into the blanket. Just make it look like a part of the blanket. The easiest way to do that is just following a line of stitching around. It's done. And then we're just gonna felt that down right there, right into the blanket. Or like I said, if you don't have a needle felter and felting mat, you can absolutely just use a needle and thread to stitch it down. And there you have it guys, your finished 35 by 50 inch seed stitch throw in Glacier. These blankets make really awesome gifts for the holidays because they're not super time intensive, but they're also a really fun handmade gift to give your loved ones. Um, remember you can shop the yarn at www.broadwickfibers.com or on our Etsy page. Thanks so much for watching.